Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. This is a Harley Benton Fanfret 8 Deluxe. It's green, it's only 400 bucks, which is ridiculous for an 8-string Fanfret with neck through construction. So is it too good to be true? Let's take a closer look. So this Harley Benton is one of the most affordable, if not the absolute most affordable 8-string fan fret with neck through construction currently on the market. Harley Benton's goal as a company is to see just how much guitar they can provide at an entry-level price point, and this fan fret 8 follows in that theme. It has an arched basswood body with a burled maple top and a 5-piece maple nato neck. The entire body, front and back, has a transparent green stain, with the headstock matching the body's dark green burst. I think it looks really cool, especially for such an inexpensive guitar, and in general the finish is pretty clean, though there are a few rough spots. There are a couple places where there are weird shiny spots, maybe excess spray or glue that's been sanded down because you can't feel them, but you can definitely see them. And then there are a couple places on the neck where the green is spotty. There's also what I assume are tool marks at the end of the fingerboard next to the neck pickup. I mean, it doesn't affect playability, but if you buy your own, these are the kind of visual things that you can expect from this relatively inexpensive guitar. Again, you wouldn't see these kind of things on a more expensive guitar, which this is obviously not, but for reviews of guitars like these, it's important to set expectations. Onto the hardware, it's actually not bad. The bridge saddles feel quite good, and the locking tuners are a huge upgrade over the standard machines from last year's FanFret 7 that I have. All the controls and electronics feel solid as well. The pots and switch aren't overly tight or overly loose. The dome control knobs don't feel cheap and honestly feel like things that you'd find on a slightly more expensive guitar. It's got a black graphite nut, which is cool. Usually lower cost guitars come with crappy plastic nuts, strings get stuck, and tuning stability can be a nightmare. The nut itself is good, though how it's fitted on the headstock does look a bit ugly. So my biggest complaint about last year's FanFret 7 was the pickups. I found them to be pretty weak and thin, which was disappointing especially for a guitar designed for thick, chunky, high-gain riffage. So for 2018, the crew at Toman have included redesigned HBZ custom-wound Electrosola B humbuckers. Here's what these new ones sound like through the lead channel of my 6505 Plus. <laughs> And 
Here's what they sound like clean through the DSL-100H. Honestly, while these are a noticeable improvement over last year's soap bars, I still think they could be better. For distorted riffs, they're just too muddy for my taste. For me, there's not nearly enough clarity, punch, or definition, especially for palm mutes or plugging away on the low F sharp. You can hear in the demo mix at the kind of thrashy middle part, the notes just kind of sound like a jumble even after post EQ and the precision drive on an aggressive tightness setting. And unlike the soap bars, these slanted open coil humbuckers are harder to find aftermarket replacements for. You can't just drop in EMGs like you could with last year's models, for example. I've heard you can modify the base plate, but that's not really something I think most people would be comfortable with. So here's to hoping Harley Benton can get it right for the 2019 models. Now as for playability, I'm still feeling my way around eight strings. The move from six to seven strings wasn't actually that bad for me, but the move from seven to eight has been a struggle and a half. That being said, I actually found this one much easier to navigate than my Michael Kelly 508, and I think that's down to the multi-scale. The fan frets make it so you get a longer scale length at the top, which is desirable for the thick, lower strings, while for the higher strings you have more of a traditional scale length. The traditional scale length, and more importantly, feel on the lower strings helped me get my bearings, and it was much easier to write something on this than on the 508 with the straight frets. Now something that threw me off though is that out of the box the setup was not nearly as good as I've come to expect from Harley Benton. They usually get to me with perfect action and intonation right out of the box and I've always said that that professional setup is one of the big selling points that puts Harley Benton ahead of most other brands in the same price range for me. It's a huge part of what makes them great especially for beginners you just unpackage it and it's ready to go. Unfortunately not quite the case with this one. In general it was easy to play apart from the 8th string. It was super low, with an ungodly amount of fret buzz, and now that I've raised it, it's okay, but I still haven't been able to get the intonation perfect. The frets on this one are nice enough, no sharp ends, no dead spots, and the 16 inch radius fingerboard has rolled edges, so once I got it decently set up, it was a lot of fun to play. The neck through construction makes every fret easily accessible, so you can get to every single note. And with this many strings and frets, there are a lot of them. And now it's time for Simon Says, the segment where we ask my guitar new roommate what he thinks of the Harley Benton Fan Fret 8 Deluxe. Simon, what do you think of this guitar? Uh, there's like a lot of strings. It's like a Christmas tree. Uh, there's seven strings on this guitar. It's got a thick neck. So how many strings did you say again there was? Oh wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I like the finish on it. This I have a feeling that Matt would scratch more, but it could be wrong. It's my intuition. My intuition tells me that. Your Simon senses are tingling. <laughs> Two of these. One of these. Harley Ben. Oh, I love Harley Ben. They're like cheap, but like good. Like good value cheap. Wait, are eight strings more expensive? Because it's like. Like, compared to six strings, right? There's two more strings. So is that like 30%, 33% more expensive? Wait. <laughs> Wait, so how does this Is musician work? not working out for you? How does this string work? You need like long fingers. I don't know, some people tell me I have long fingers, but not long. <laughs> <laughs> Who is telling uh, you? Uh, <laughs> not important. Uh, can we take it out of context? So, how many thumbs do you give this one? I'll give this one a solid one and a half. One and a half stars. <laughs> or thumbs. <laughs> Now a lot of you have recently asked me to prioritize this review since a few weeks ago another YouTuber did a video on this FanFret 8 and he was, to put it lightly, less than impressed. Now I have zero doubts that Arnold's complaints are legitimate about that particular unit. The Toman guys take QC very, very seriously, and I've spoken to them about the 8-string in particular. They've told me they were having problems with consistency from the original factory that was making them and they've since switched. Arnold mentioned that his was from earlier in the year, as is this one. Mine is okay, his was not. 
I think this kind of goes to show how standards have changed for lower cost guitars. A few years ago, an 8-string fan fret with neck through construction for under 400 bucks new, you'd expect that to look terrible and be absolutely unplayable. Now we're at least expecting some level of consistency. In the EU, Toman's got a great return policy in case something goes wrong, but if you're in the US, it's a bit of a gamble, at least it seems to be with this model right now. To be frank, the FanFret 8 Deluxe, this is the first Harley Benton that hasn't blown me away in terms of bang for buck. Don't get me wrong, an 8-string multi-scale with neck through construction and no huge flaws for 400 bucks, it's still great value for the money, it's just not to the same standard of instrument that Harley Benton has spoiled me with in the past. That being said, I think I still would recommend this guitar as an option for anyone looking to pick up their first 8-string. Like, on a personal level, this is great for me because I don't play 8-strings that often, but I still want that option in my arsenal. And the fan fret makes it more familiar, especially on the treble strings, than a non-multi-scale 8. As a predominantly 6-string player, I wouldn't be willing to spend a huge amount on one, but I still want something that's fun to play, and the neck through construction is just an amazing feature to have on such an inexpensive instrument. Basically, the Harley Benton takes all the boxes for this filthy 8-string casual. If I were serious about my 8-strings though, I would probably splash a little more cash on an Ibanez or a Jackson, like a brand with a more established pedigree in the 8-string space, at least until I know for sure Harley Benton has sorted out this model's consistency. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. These are of course just my opinions and I'd love to hear what you think. So leave your comments down below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, while you're at it, hit the notification bell. Otherwise, YouTube won't tell you about any new uploads. Thanks to Luke for mixing the demo track. He's got a great channel. Check it out in the cards. And thanks to Toman for sending this guitar out for the video. If you want to support what I do with the honest reviews and get bonus extras like song downloads and tabs, please check out my Patreon. All links are in the description, including where to get the gear featured, social media, signal chain, and our Discord server, which you should definitely join. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome. This is the Harley Benton Fan Fret 8 Deluxe, and I'll see you for the next video.